Coming up next on Profiles in Caring, presented by Equitable Life and Casualty, we visit Uganda, the place where many people believe the AIDS epidemic actually started. We're going to profile one American nonprofit working to save lives affected by AIDS. Profiles in Caring is next. The following Profiles in Caring is brought to you by generous funding from Equitable Life and Casualty. Committed to being the premier life and health insurer for the ultimate generation, today's senior American. Welcome to this edition of Profiles in Caring. I'm Kimberly Perkins. By now, most of us know how much the continent of Africa is plagued by the AIDS epidemic. What you might not know is that a lot of people think that this epidemic actually started in Uganda. What you also might not know is that Uganda is leading the fight against AIDS. And it's doing so with the help of foundations like the one we're profiling today, the American Foundation for Children with AIDS. Doug Jardine traveled with this nonprofit and has the story of the amazing work it does and how it's changing so many lives. It is a sight you wouldn't find so uncommon, children with giggles and laughter playing together, games most of us played as youngsters. An adult leader takes them through the exercises, but not just any exercises. There is a direct focus here on getting these young bodies ready for the day that lies ahead of them. Tell me why it is so important for these kids to get exercise and to play. They play first of all, they come when it's cold and they get very, uh, they get very cold. So I, I make sure that they are warm for entering. And secondly, it's for their, for, for this, phys, it, it makes them physically fit. And secondly, and another thing, it helps them it, 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 when they are taking the drugs. They are, there's a drug which needs them to have exercise, not to be dormant. And of course, a healthy mind in a healthy body. You heard correctly. Exercises to make sure these beautiful young children stay as strong as possible to handle rigors that disease will place on their bodies, the rigors of having HIV AIDS. The games and exercise are carried out just feet away from the front door to Uganda's largest referral hospital for those with HIV AIDS, the Mulago Hospital. The children and their parents have lined up, some with appointment, some do not have appointments. Some will be tested for the first time for HIV AIDS, some are already patients. But things have changed dramatically here in Kampala over the last few years because of an influx of money. That influx of money means an influx of free drugs, drugs that prolong the lives of hundreds of thousands of Ugandans. Sure, we've done some good things, very many good things. We have reduced the rate of uh, HIV prevalence from about 26% to 6.4% currently. That's incredible. You feel really good about that. I feel pretty good about it. And uh, my best wish is that we could even bring it lower. There are many theories which suggest the worldwide spread of AIDS began in Uganda sometime in the late 1970s, right here on the shores of the world's second largest freshwater lake, Lake Victoria. During the 1990s, HIV prevalence peaked among Ugandan adults. Estimates placed the number of pregnant women at that time with HIV AIDS at three out of every 10. At the beginning of 2006, the number of Ugandan adults living with AIDS was almost 7%. And at that time, in this nation of about 27 million people, one million Ugandans were living with HIV AIDS. That is one in 27 people who had AIDS. What the Mulago Hospital was about to undertake and has since accomplished may have literally saved the nation. We need to focus first in reducing the new infections. 
particularly if I have to talk about children, we need to make sure that we reduce mother to child transmission, first prevent new infections in women, secondly get women to attend antenatal care and access testing for HIV, thirdly get these women to accept to take their drugs, the antiretroviral drugs, to stop them from getting, passing on the virus to their children, and Fourth, identify these children as early as possible so that we can prevent those who would probably get it through breastfeeding. I think that Uganda is doing well. It's um, one of the best performing countries in Africa. Um, and again, it's, it's major resources is people. And that uh, given the support, given the funding, the, the people here can do amazing things. In 2003, there are very few people on treatment, and it's just been an amazing transformation within the country, seeing people, as treatment has become available, I think hope has really grown, and more and more people are seeking care, more and, pe more, and more people are being tested and coming out to be tested, I think because they have hope. They think there's now there's something that I can do about it. So um, with hope, lots of things can happen. So the hope in the general public is that they would understand and be smarter, but the fact is, Many thousands will still contract HIV AIDS and a large percentage of them are children who suffer because of the carelessness of adults. But here again, there is some hope. The thing that excites me the most in this clinic is that to see a child being brought, bedridden, unable to walk or on a wheelchair or something like that, and you begin to give ART, and then you see this child gaining weight standing on his feet, going back to school, it's beautiful. You really improve the quality of life and you appreciate it. It's nice. And the quality of life is directly attributable to ARVs, antiretroviral drugs. Antiretrovirals suppress the virus. So what, it, what they do is they attack the virus at different stages in the HIV rep reproduction cycle. So it suppresses virus in a person who is infected with HIV, so they have less virus in the body, therefore their immune system is less challenged, and then they can remain healthier for a longer period of time. It's not a cure, but it's definitely um, treatment that can lead to a much, much improved quality of life for um, children. And these life-prolonging, quality-of-life-enhancing drugs come to Uganda through the Herculean efforts of the American Foundation for Children with AIDS, which not only supports the Mulago Hospital in Kampala, Uganda, but four hospitals spread throughout Eastern Africa. We provide free medicine to children in Kenya and Uganda presently with the hopes of expanding to other countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. Right now we work with about a thousand children. We hope to grow that number, but our true purpose is simply to help save lives and give children the ability to live full lives whether they have HIV or not. But the American Foundation for Children with AIDS not only provides the life prolonging ARVs but chemotherapy medications along with medicine to treat so-called opportunistic diseases which may accompany HIV AIDS in children younger than 19 years. Thousands and thousands of children are being saved just because they can access free drugs and they can access free lab investigations and all that. Without that, I could imagine probably the huge numbers that we see here, all of them probably would be dead or some of them would be lying in their deathbeds now. When Profiles in Caring continues from Uganda, the unique approach taken by the Mulago Hospital in providing home testing and home care. <laughs>